Hello everyone, and welcome to a quick video that I wanted to get for you guys today. Today, Jagex introduced Tim Portis, a new skilling boss that centers around fishing and is very similar to the Wintertop boss. This video is going to be going over how you can maximize the rewards in order to get all of the rare and unique drops from this boss. Rare and unique drops from this boss are Spirit Flakes, which can be used to spirit purchase the Spirit Angler outfit from Gita Primes east of the dock. Each piece of the Spirit Angler outfit is going to cost 1200 and is purely a cosmetic change between the Angler outfit and the Spirit Angler. A total Spirit Angler outfit is going to cost 4800 Spirit Flakes. The next item is going to be the Fish Barrel, which acts similar to a looting bag in that it can hold 28 items and it can only be emptied at a bank. The difference being that the Fish Barrel can only hold fish. This item can be combined with the Fish Sack that you can get for 1000 Mulch Pearls from Alvary the Angler on Mulch Island. Combining it with the fish sack does make it equipable in your cape slot. The next item is the tackle box. The tackle box is every fisherman's best friend, as it can hold all of the bait, equipment, and even the angler outfit that you can need. The next item is a vanity item. It's the big harpoon fish, and it's very similar to the big swordfish and the big shark, in that you can present it in your skill hall of your player own house. Lastly, the last item that you can get is the Tome of Water, which is similar to the Tome of Fire and that it requires 50 magic to use. And when equipped and charged with soaked pages, it acts as unlimited water runes and it increases the damage of water spells by 20% and increases the accuracy of all water, curse, and binding spells. The last item here is actually the pet. Temporis's pet is Tiny Temple. So how do we get here is going to be the first question. Anybody can get here even if you've not even if you've not passed any quests. I do recommend that you have at least one water skin and you're going to need about 205 coins. This minigame is safe, so even a 10 hit points hardcore Iron Man can come down here and complete it. What you're going to want to do is come to Alcarid, use 5 coins to uh, buy the Shantae Pass from Shantae at Shantae Pass, cross through the Shantae Pass, and with the other 200 coins, take the carpet to Polna Beach. If you have passed uh, some desert quests, then you can actually ride the second carpet down here to Menaphos and head just northwest to the ruins of Unka. Or Unka. If you've not passed uh, any kind of desert diary or any of the desert quests, you'll run south through Polna Beach and then southwest along the river until you get to um, the little pyramid out here, in the, out here in the middle of nowhere. And then cut just slightly more west and then same thing, you'll go to the ruins of Unka. Let's go quickly over the inventory that you're going to need before you go into a game. Your angler outfit is always going to be a plus as you gain a lot of fishing experience from this. So the 2.5% XP boost from the angler outfit is pretty good here. The other things that you're going to need before you start a game are going to be the harpoon, a rope, and a bucket of water. These items can all be found inside the game, but they can also be found outside of the game right next to Gita Prime. You can find the harpoon and the rope right there. The bucket we'll go ahead and grab in the game. We're gonna head over to the to the uh, dock. We do have Entity Hider turned off because this right here that you're seeing is actually only pets and random events associated with the players. It's a very busy world and if we had Entity Hider turned off, then it would be very chaotic to look at. Quickly before we go into this, since there's not any official way to solo this yet, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're trying to stay in the official Temporalist world or have a team. The official Temporal Worlds are going to be World 341 for the UK, World 422 for the US, World 463 for Germany, and World 531 for, the, uh, for Australia. Games are pretty quick to start here, so we're going to go ahead and climb up on the boat. Whenever you climb up on the boat, you put into a queue, and then you'll be taken to the island. Whenever we get to the island, if you need any of this gear, it is going to be located on the boat. The first thing I like to do whenever I get into a game is to run down the anchor and find your fishing spot. There should be two fishing spots activated on each side, whether that's north or south. We have one activated right here and one activated right here. If you are purely going for XP per hour rather than points per hour, then you're gonna to wanna to do everything here except cook. Whenever you first get into a game, you're gonna to wanna to come down to your fishing spot, start to harpoon it, and you'll have two standard fishing spots. I call them standard fishing spots because you'll see eventually that there'll be a double fishing spot pop up. I like to fish here until this first one disappears or a double fishing spot pops up. 
whenever either of these things happen, I'll go over to the shrine right here and cook at it. So our first one disappeared. Oh, actually, right there beside us was a double fishing spot. You can tell the difference between a standard fishing spot, such as these two over here, and a double fishing spot, in that the double fishing spot is going to have a harpoon fish jumping in and out of it. While you're fishing here at the double fishing spot, you're not always going to get double fish, but you do at least have a chance of getting double fish. A couple of attacks you want to watch out for are going to be the first one that you're seeing on the screen right now. Down in the chat box, you'll say a colossal wave closes in. You want to make sure you have a rope in your inventory and that you run over to the totem pole if you're off the boat, and if you're on the boat, run over to the mast and tether yourself to it by left clicking on it. While you're tethered, you can click anywhere else as long as you don't click on it to untether um, and be completely safe. You don't take any damage if you get hit by that attack, but you will lose a piece of equipment and then a couple fish. This is the second attack that you're going to look for. The guy will uh, cry out that storm clouds are rolling in, and then down in the chat box you can see a strong wind blows as clouds roll in. They'll come in, a dark spot will appear below them, and the, ground, and the clouds will increase in size. After a while, they will strike the ground with lightning, causing fire. If the fire is not doused by using a bucket of water on it um, in a timely manner, then the fire can actually spread like it did right there. If you're down here, you can resupply your water at the bilge pump over here. If you're on the boat, it's going to be up here on the far side. Those are the only two attacks that you have to worry about whenever you're not on the boat. If you are on the boat, a third attack comes in, which you can see is affecting this cannon right here. We have another colossal wave coming in. The third attack that you're going to look for is going to be a whirlpool that originates from the Temporus boss right here and comes towards one of the two cannons on your side. In the chat box, it'll say something along the lines of a powerful surge heads towards one of the cannons. Whenever this happens, you want to make sure you're not interacting with the cannon because if it does, so here's the here's the bot, or the attack, and it went to the other cannon on the far side. All right, we're getting fishing. You want to make sure that you're not interacting with the cannon whenever that attack comes in. If you are, again, it doesn't damage you, but it will stun you and interrupt the action that you're doing. Whenever that's done, you're going to come back down here. You're always going to be trying to fish at the double fish spot, and if the double fish spot is not activated, then I recommend cooking at the shrine. Again, if you're going for XP per hour rather than points per hour, just continue to fish at the spots and then drop your uncooked fish into the ammunition crate on the boat. We're looking at his energy level right here, and when his energy level drops to zero, he actually becomes vulnerable. Now that's at 1%, we're gonna run out here onto the dock. It says down here, Temporalis is vulnerable, and you'll see that on either one of the docks, you'll have a uh, spirit pool. So you're gonna go ahead and harpoon the spirit pool, and what this is gonna do is deal damage directly to Temporalis. You'll see that listed as his essence. While you're damaging him, he is trying to recover his energy, and you can continue to damage him until his energy reaches 100%. Whenever his energy reaches 100%, he does become invulnerable again, and you'll have to go back and repeat phase one again. Generally speaking, this is going to take two phases to do. I've not seen it take any less, and I've not seen it take any more in the future worlds. Another way that the game can end is if the storm intensity rises to 100%. I've not seen this happen, and I'm not sure what happens, but I assume you just get kicked out of the game. We will continue to attack him here, and during phase two, I want to discuss uh, what points are worth. Like how much point you get per action. So as stated earlier, you do get um, five points per uh, fish that you catch. And if you catch two fish at a time using the double loot, you'll actually go ahead and get 10 points. Each time you cook a fish, it's also gonna be worth 10 points. Tethering yourself to the totem and the mast is also gonna give you 10 points. Dousing a fire with a bucket of water will give you 20 points. Um, whenever you're on the ship, giving all right, another colossal wave closes in. So we can actually see right here, we're at 2980. We're gonna close, uh, tether ourselves. And then as soon as the wave hits us, we're gonna go up to 21, or 2990. We'll go back to double fishing. Damaging Temporos, uh, whenever his energy is low, damaging him is gonna give you 55 points each time. Loading a cooked fish into the ammunition crate will give you 65 points, and loading an uncooked fish into the ammunition crate will give you 20 points each time. 
since we're about to be blocked off by this one right here, we're just going to go ahead and run onto the ship and start dropping our uh, fish into the crate. As we can see right here on 3045, the next one is going to bring us to 3110, 3175, and so on and so forth. Like I said, every cooked fish is 65 points, and every uncooked fish is 20. We're going to make sure we get this water pump real fast and put out this fire before it spreads. And it's spread anyways, we're going to go ahead and run. It looks like we just got it off in time to prevent it from spreading. So the winter top boss, you have to get 500 points in order to get a supply crate that is guaranteed to have two items in it. Here you don't get the supply crates, rather you get what is called a reward permit. Your first reward permit is earned at 2000 points and every 500 points on top of that guarantees an additional award permit, whereas points in between the 500 point threshold um, gives you a percent chance. So right there we got 4205 points we got four reward permits. Whenever you end, you're gonna be kicked off of the, uh, you're gonna be ferried back to the ruins of Umka in 20 seconds, or you can talk to first mate Derry, or if you're on the south side, first mate Perry and hit leave. Whenever you get done, you're gonna be ferried back to the, uh, the boat. In order to spend your reward permits, you're gonna come down here, talk to the spirit angler, and you can right click on him, take net, but you will still have to go through uh, a little bit of dialogue. They'll give you a net, and then you're going to uh, net, net from the reward pool and hope that you get a really good item. I believe that's everything you guys need to know about Temporos and how to maximize the points. Again, if you're looking for XP per hour, go ahead and skip the cooking. But if you're looking for points per hour, go ahead and do the cooking. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment below. Otherwise, if you like this, uh, if you like this and found this to be informational and helpful, go ahead and leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to stay up to date. I believe the next video that I am going to be releasing, as it pertains to Temporos, is going to be loot from 5,000 reward permits. Uh, subscribe if you guys want to see that. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a good day.